hello. Today uh, I'm with Jan Dunbar and she's going to tell you who she is. Right. Uh, well, I'm Jan Dunbar and I'm uh, an archaeologist and illustrator, primarily an illustrator uh, who works with Ali on various projects. Um, my background is an art, art background rather than an archaeological one. So I like to think of myself as an illustrator rather than a, an archaeologist. But I mean, Jan, we met in when we worked in the Aberdeen City Council unit and, and I started there in 1986 and you were digging then because the first sight I have of you was like the one in the bottom middle here with a mattock in your hand. So, I mean, you've obviously been an archaeologist as well for a long time. Yes, I, st I started in, I think, 1979 when the unit was first set up, but I didn't actually do any digging till about the 80s. I think the first site I worked on was the Carmelites in the Green. Yeah. So that must have been fairly early on in my digging career when we first met, I think. Yeah, so that was 80, 81, the Carmelites in the Green, so yeah. Um, so these are nice pictures of Jan obviously digging with us. and uh, But uh, we want to talk today about some different uh, illustrations that Jan has, um, has, has, has drawn. And so um, this first site that we're going to talk about is um, a Mesolithic pit alignment uh, at Crathis, which were excavated by Charlie and Hilary Murray and Shannon Fraser. And so this is just a couple of images of the site. We've actually got Shannon going to do a talk um, later on in the week, which we'll put up on YouTube as well. But essentially, these enormous pits which were excavated, and you can see here sections through them, uh, essentially Mesolithic in date to the bottom of the pits, and then Neolithic um, recuts in the top of each pit. So this is the illustration that Jan drew. So do you, can you tell us a bit about how that was drawn? Um, well, first of all, we start off with the plan of the site, obviously, and um, a lot of input from the, well, mainly from Hillary, it was, um, who you saw in that photo there. Um, so you would start off with trying to get an, a, an idea, a feel for what the place would have been like in those days. So a site visit, you've got to do a site visit first and get a feel for it. And then some research into what the countryside would have been like at that time, what kind of trees were there, what the, the land surface was like, and then work it out with, a, with the plan um, try and put it into some sort of perspective and um, just let your imagination take over and um, Im imagine what it would have been like to be there and who would have been there and what they would have been doing. And, um, in the report, there's mentions of these fires that were set round about and um, the pit alignment, there's various posts, um, post holes round them as well, and trees where they thought that, it, that the alignment had, had been shifted to avoid tree roots and things like that. So you just have to work away. And then once I've got a, an idea of what it might have been like, I would send the drawing off to Hillary and, um, or whoever it was that would, had commissioned it, and um, they would have a look and make comments. I mean, there are, this was, maybe version three of this one. So normally there are changes to be made. Um, you know, the, for example, the, I think she said that the, the holes look like polos, I think, first one I did. So I had to make them look slightly less regular and um, yeah. So the, the excavation produced evidence of birch and various other trees. And so it's yes. more uh, slow scrub. And so that's what you're seeing, sort of no big trees, but low yeah. bushy trees so i went out and um took lots of photographs of <laughs> similar of, of areas that i thought that that would have looked like to give me you know an idea of the color and the texture of the trees and the the size and the shape of the trunk and everything try and get them slightly species correct you know yeah because i mean they had thought that rather than being um well, a calendar or anything practical, that were, it was more like a ceremonial site. And I think that's what uh -huh. we're doing here, that obviously the site is quite close to the River Dee and so the people are carrying salmon. Is that what they're, they're carrying? That's, yeah, that's right. Well, that was, yeah. Uh -huh. And also they have put in sort of totem. I try and keep them vague. I don't want to be too specific about it, so. No, no, no. 
but you know but it's just to give an impression really yeah yeah and i mean it's you know everything in it is based on things that have been found in mesolithic sites on these side scotland or or around about uh -huh. i love the antlers i've been doing the star car course online and um fantastic these frontlets you know with the the antlers yeah. wonderful yeah so and i had a week i've got put in a little sort of clutty tree as well so. oh what's a clutty tree well they you know they like the clutty um clutty well oh right okay so sort of totems from there ah right okay is that this here yeah. Uh -huh. All right. No, I hadn't noticed that before. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jan, how long did that take to do then altogether from version one, including going out and photographing? They take, they take ages to do because, I mean, the research bit, I think, probably takes the longest. Um, and the actual, the actual painting doesn't take, would take maybe, what, three days, something like that, four days. Depends how much, yeah. Okay. Um, because even I mean, the some, of, some of them, sorry, even the clothing, you know, I mean, we don't really know what yeah, so they are. So, assume that they were, yeah, it's all got to be re researched, and so that's the type that's the bit that takes the time and sending it off, getting it back, making alterations. Um, and then the actual, the actual final painting doesn't take that long, okay. Um, is it that's why I don't. Is it, is, is it more difficult to do a Mesolithic one than a medieval one? Well, there's less information yeah. <laughs> available, so it's more made up. But then, on the other hand, there's not so much structural stuff to do, so yeah, which can take quite a long time. Yeah, yeah, sort of differences. You know? um, oh, so it evens out, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, if we move on to the next... It's good fun, though, because you kind of... Sorry. There you go. <laughs> I was just going to say it's quite good fun because you can sort of immerse yourself in that wee world for a while and imagine being there and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, this next image is in the same field, isn't it, at Crathis, this near yes, uh -huh. wall, which was, again, Charlie and Hilary Murray excavated. Um, and, um, I mean, she's a building specialist, so she produced Im images or ide ideas and images for you to, to work on. And so this is the site plan. Um, that you said at the, on the first image that we, you you obviously uh -huh. get that first, and there's obviously an aerial picture here which I think was taken by Moira Gregg, um, and then I put up these two images. Um, so can you talk us through those? Yeah, well, the, those were the two versions that Hillary. Um, she, she was she wasn't sure whether it was a fully roofed structure or it was, as you can see in the second one, it had open ends um, used as. Well, they don't really know what they were used for, some sort of ceremonial thing, I think. And the uh, rear end, the, the bit at the back was um, possibly for holding stock. Um, so she supplied me with the plan and a sketch and some details of what to do and then left me to work it all out. So so that one was done. I, I, I did that one. Um, I'd, I copied the plan onto Coral Draw, and then I um, used a perspective tool to get some kind, so I could get the posts in the right place, basically. And then I took it from there. So, I mean, Hillary had done a lot of work on that because she's obviously an expert in buildings. And so she had yeah. a uh, idea, presumably, of what she wanted. And then you yeah. were sort of translating that in, in an artistic sense. Yeah, as well, she did. She. Did, it's her reconstruction. She did. She did the um, oh the work on that, and then I just because I can draw better than she can. I just drew it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, the next site is one that I we 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 worked on together at Adam Country Park, mm -hmm. and this is an amazing site. Which well, you and I have been through the whole of this from finding three post holes in twenty sixteen or seventeen. Um, to uncovering part of this structure, the middle of the structure. So we found these three post holes first, and then we uncovered this central bit. And then in the in the second big season, we uncovered this huge enclosure, which is made up of these very ploughed out post holes. Um, I mean, the other areas, there's some there's some other things like these are quarrying, and the um, you know some of these are, are um, 
possibly not post holes as such, but more earth fast stones with cuts round about them. And the green ones are actually where there's been living trees that have fallen over. Um, but this is a bit of a challenge for generally for all of us, I think, that we weren't sure. But the most likely thing based on the flints from the um, topsoil and the structure of it and talking to Gordon Noble and other people about this is that it is a Neolithic enclosure. I mean, the flints were early to late Neolithic in date. And um, so then I tasked you with finding, um, you know, or making a parallel, making an artist's impression of something similar to this based on not really knowing the exact date of it. But um, and so, um, I mean, this is the image that you created. Well, that was done the same way with the, the posts, so I could get the posts in the right place and the trees in the right place. And I decided that that, that one, um, I can't remember why now, but I thought it would look better as a sort of winter winter scene rather than uh, having the having it all leafy and um, summery looking. I thought it sort of morbid, dark. Yes, well, I mean, you've sort of the burial yeah. enclosure or, an, um, you know, um, where they would lay out bodies potentially and uh, they would get pecked by crows and foxes. Rats. I didn't get any rats in it. I should have tried. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so you've got the living trees, um, which we know are part of the structure based on the, you know, obviously the excavated pits. And then you've got these lovely little posts. And, I mean, we were, had wondered at first if it was going to be a roofed structure, but um, and there was no big posts inside which would suggest that it had. So, uh, I mean, I think these are exactly right, the, what we were thinking, these small post holes that, uh, you know, are not holding enormous structural posts, but... Um, and I like the way they're decorated. I think that the park are hoping to yeah. recreate something like that, you know, maybe getting kids to decorate posts in, in the sort of style. Mm -hmm. like that. I mean, the decoration was, it's it's quite similar in ways to the previous illustration, obviously, with the the one with the open end on the, on the building, where she had these totems up. And the colours were based on that. Um, and the colours... I used for the the hall and crathers was um, some pigments that had been found. So there was like ochres and um, I can't remember now, but but I mean colours. So that that's why these I I used those same colours on this because obviously it was something that was used at the time. Yeah, I mean we've obviously got a problem at Adam because it's been so ploughed out. We don't have that you know any other evidence. We don't have the. Uh, soil samples that they had from Crathis, which will give us, you know, anything to do with the environment. But I mean, we know it would be similar, you know, these sort of small trees, bushy trees. And um, obviously, you sometimes have to take things from other sites. So you look at archaeology, archaeological digs on other places and um, and then use that information in something like this where we have less information. Yeah. Um, so. The next one is um, a site, again, that we've worked on, and this is the Book of Deer, which um, if people don't know about, they can go and have a look at the Book of Deer online. But um, we had done an excavation, well, over two seasons now, and in the first one found um, this lovely stone hearth, which um, we uh, uh, excavation got dates um, of the late 11th century, early 12th century for. And um, around about it, there was a ring of... Um, stakes which suggested not a, a a big permanent structure but sort of a, a, a maybe like a post and wattle structure um, and so this was the illustration you did for that so it is sort of early medieval uh, site lots of charcoal i remember because i because it was me that excavated the, the hearth actually so remember this layer of char really rich charcoal rich soil that came down just from where i've shown there just halfway down the hearth Downhill. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, the whole team of you from digging down, I mean, the first year we hand dug down that trench, didn't we? And um, you were all completely black, you know, hands and feet. <laughs> yeah, and that's right. And you were covered in black. I've got some great images, which I oh, shouldn't, I should have had now, but I haven't. But um, yeah, so again, that was, um, you know, based on two or three little pieces of, of evidence. But um, yeah. Um, and well, we had the hearth and we had where the stake holes were and we had the charcoal obviously so 
all I had to do was research what um, these small smelting um, furnaces would have looked like and bellows. The bellows were quite hard to find any. I think um, I eventually found them online somewhere. But that was, yeah, so I mean, we didn't have evidence for bellows, but obviously to have no. a kiln like that, you have to have something like that. So again, that's bringing in evidence from other sites, other, you know, sometimes it'd be ethnographic um, or archaeological sites. Um. Yeah, well, I, yes, the Internet's a wonderful thing. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> See. Yes. Yes, because I like this. This is where our stakes were stuck into the ground, and then we had a we had a little line across the middle as well, which is that um, it was four or five stake holes, weren't they, just across the centre of the building? Right. Well, you just have to you you have to try and figure out what these things could be, and you have to try and include them in your drawing in some way. So that is just an interpretation of. I mean, there could have been anything. Could have been a little shelter you know with a roof on it uh, or a, like a tarpaulin roof kind of thing to but we don't know so no no but i mean making these drawings are so important particularly this sort of something like this one which people have really enjoyed and commented on because um you know coming to see it even to see a dig um it's difficult to imagine sometimes what it would have been like so creating images like this i just think it's so important for people to see and people have really enjoyed seeing this one Um, so, as I said, we worked in Aberdeen City Council. Well, you worked in the archaeology unit in the council for a long time. And um, the next few images are ones that you created as part of that work, I think. That um... Yes. Uh -huh. um, yeah, this is the Justice Port. This is based very heavily. If anybody who knows Dundee, it, it's based um, on the existing port that's there, um, which... It's one of the few left standing that you can actually um, see in Scotland. So, um, and that's at the at the bottom of the castle gate. Yeah. So when um, I was, when I was showing you this map, Jan, it's it's in here somewhere, or it was in here somewhere on the. I think it's further up. Up further this way. It? This way. Well, I I think it's you see there's a sort of blue splodge at the end of the. Yeah. I think that's where it is. So essentially, well, that's where I kind of imagined it to be. Yeah, I mean, this is the castle gate. You've got the market cross here in roughly the same position as it is now. Ah. Uh -huh. So yeah. So and then at that time, Justice Street would have gone along here. Um. So yes, I mean, so somewhere around here. Oh, okay. Yes, because what? Yeah. I'm and the the number eight up in the top left hand corner. It's the Templar site, but that's in where the you remember where the Castlegate markets used to be? Yes. Um 20, 30 years ago. It was yeah. a big open space. It's still there? No. Anyway, that's that's that bit. So I'm figuring that that that, that splodge must have been roughly where the port was. Ah, okay. So I mean this but then we don't know either. Hmm. So so this you were saying it was based on Dundee, but um, uh -huh. so I mean the details of it are like this one with there because this has got um, heads on it that are being pecked by. Yes, stars. that's right. Uh huh. Yes, the, there are the Wisher Arch is in as I say in Dundee. It had these little holes in the top on the the, um, the bits at the top, and that's what I figured out that they probably were used for um, hanging people from or putting the spiked heads on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they dip them in tar first to stop them decomposing, but those ones I've just left. So I, I quite like the idea of the children trying to knock them off with stones. Yeah, yeah. And and these would have been like criminals who had been um who were maybe well, criminals or unfortunates who'd been yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so this is Jan, this is looking into the into the yes. town then because this yeah. is the, this is the toll booth in the background, presumably. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um so I mean we haven't done much excavation in this sort of area. Um but um yeah, it's um well, there was one you can on the only one I can think of, yeah. 
Peacock, there was one down Peacock somewhere, wasn't there? Yeah, Peacock's Lane. Yeah. 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 Didn't find much, I don't think. No, but but again, we know people would have driven sheep and different animals in to the market in the mm-hmm. state. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and yeah. we know that kids would have thrown things, you know. So yes, it's. I mean, there's yeah, obviously there's a certain amount of artistic license. So mm. otherwise, they wouldn't be interesting. Yeah, I mean that's it. That's the bit I like actually is the little details that you put in. Yeah, oh, look, fun bit, and I think other people do too. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at those drawings. Like you can look at an old map like this forever. You know, looking at all the little details. Yeah, so. you, you can do that in the in your drawings as well. With all the those little details. Yeah. Um, Jan, the next site is the castle. You did some reconstruction drawings of the castle um, in Aberdeen. Um, is that was was that for a leaflet, an Aberdeen City Council leaflet? I can't really remember what it was. I think it was done for one of them. Yeah. It was there was a leaflet created with the castle and um I'm I, I don't I mean I don't know whether these were created for that. But essentially, I mean the castle site, um I mean the hill is still there with multi stories on it and you can see well the heading hill is also there with housing on it. But uh, and again we haven't done much excavation in, in with what the excavation we've done really hasn't um, produced much evidence of the castle itself, no. and no. it was very short lived. The castle, yeah, that was that was obviously done. It's quite speculative, obviously. Yeah, yeah. but this um, is obviously when based had, on what evidence there was available. Yeah, I mean by sixteen sixty one, which is this Parson Gordon's map, um, which is available in the National Library of Scotland online. Um, you can get this. Um, and there are obviously not much left apart from obviously it says the Castle Hill and we still call it the Castle Hill and the Castle Gate now and you can see Fitty Wind which well still exists um, but yeah so I like this because I like it when you create a pencil drawing first and then I'll, we're going to show the coloured one but uh... Right so well that's how it starts really it starts with with the colour the pencil version um, which I suppose is just based on I mean, I can't really remember much about the details of doing it, uh, the illustration. I think we did it after, if you remember, we did a small excavation at the back of the Citadel, didn't we? Salvation Army Citadel, yes, and we found a wall. Yeah, so I think it must have been done after that, because we found a wall, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, anyway... That's how it starts, and then uh, once that's all been approved of, and um, everybody everybody seems happy with it, then I will progress on do the color version, which you can see is very similar. Yeah. So I mean, a lot of this is based on Parson Gordon. I mean, presumably, yeah, um, from the fourteenth, fifteenth century, wouldn't be much different um, to in to sixteen sixty one Parson Gordon, and so you've obviously got the shore and the um, and the sort of almost the road layout or the path layout, which is is based a bit on past. Yeah, then yeah, the, the road down to Fitty and the uh, fields and things like that that are in it that sh- that are shown in Parson Garden. Yeah, and then um, this is the this is the other port. Yeah. This is the Fitty port, is it? Yes. Uh huh. The one here, and then you go into the Castle Gate, and on the other side was where we were just talking about. Uh, the Justice Port. In fact, yeah. that'll be Justice Street going out, off out in out of the town there. Yeah. yeah. Now, in actual fact, I haven't put the other port in there, but that's because I suppose it wasn't on Parson Gordon. Yeah, maybe it's just a little bit. I did that drawing before I did the other one. Yeah. Jan, <laughs> so, so when you did the castle, what, that's based on other castles then of a, of a similar yes. date? Yes. Similar date, yeah. yeah. And I know there was a chapel. Uh, and you can see it's mainly a wall, a curtain wall. So it's always good to be vague about things you don't know that much about, really. So hide it all behind the wall. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So how how else do you cover up things that you're not sure about? Smoke. <laughs> all right. <laughs> smoke is smoke and and foliage. I find the smoke is is great. Mm-hmm. Or, um, yeah. All right. <laughs> So the more smoke and foliage on, on an illustration, the less you know about. Less I know about it, basically. <laughs> yeah. um, 
Jam, these were done, well, for the 2001 publication, Aberdeen and the yeah. City's Past, which we, well, we all worked on. We worked on the excavations. And then for the fines and environmental chapters, when we were conceiving the book, we, we Judith Stones, who was our boss, you, me, and a few other people, um, talked about how we were going to make these, you know, like a, well, you call, we called them woodcuts, didn't we? So make like yes, a, a image for an introduction. Yes. So this this is the environmental chapter, I think. Um, uh-huh. um, and I just really like these images and I use them in talks and, um, I mean, people just really like them. Um, yeah. So, the, well, they're just done, they're just a sort of stylized um, version based on old manuscripts, basically. Uh, Luttrell Salter is a great uh, source of inspiration. And then just to put in as many bits and pieces from that, chapter as I could fit in really. So you can see here all the leather working that was done and um the tanning pits. Yeah so that's one of the tanning in. that's one of the tanning pits mm-hmm. from Gallagate, which uh, right, yeah. you've obviously recreated the, the shoes as well from the Gallagate from the Gallagate Middle School site, um making these fantastic pointed shoes. Repairing them in the front there. Yeah. And um yeah and then making them in the background. Yeah. So they were quite good fun to do as well, I have to say. I haven't seen them for a very long time. <laughs> well, I like them. I'm going to show you another couple of them, actually, because um, I really uh-huh. like this one as well, which um, I think this was the the fish and, and animal bone section of it. Yeah, so. And so, um, yeah, I, I really like this. We've obviously got, um, well, you've got the boat here on Parson Gordon, the little, or the um, the, the, the net um is one of the details on Parson Gordon's. You've got um a cleaved um a cattle skull, so being chopped in half, presumably to take the brain out for food. Um you've got fish which you've got uh, holes in them where they've been had hooks through them, you know, for hanging them up. Um so yeah, I mean I, I love the details of this. Obviously you've got the fishing here. The sheep now the sheep come from is that the lateral salt of that little I think so, yeah. Pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> then you've obviously got the butchers. So we've got all these fantastic butchered bones from the dig. Yeah, so that, that I'm, I'm sure they were just, they, they've been taken from the lateral salter as well, I think, probably, or some. I mean, they're not all copied directly, but they definitely they, they, um, the feel of it is supposed to be from an old man, manuscript. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I think they worked really nice as chapter heading. I'd like the pig myself. <laughs> yes, he's. He looks happy even in <laughs> chopped up. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, well. Yeah, and then this one was um, the... Just the weaving and uh, the material, you know, cloth manufacturer. Yeah, so we've got spindle whirls from, oh, from these digs, you know, spindle whirls and weights. This is the barrel from the Gallagate Middle School site, which survived um, beautifully and it poured with rain. The loom. Seeing it. Uh, the loom, the um, weaving sword. And dyed cloth, so quite a lot of dyed cloth from one of these sites. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And again, you brought brought in so the upright loom, for example, we've got loom weights. You've got the spindle work yeah. here. Um, yeah. The barrel, obviously. The dye at the top there as well, grinding up the yes plant material to make dye. Yeah, mortar and pestle. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah. and dyeing so. Yep. And the, wa- the water, obviously, is a big big thing for that necessary. So to make it look like water, I've put a fish in it. Uh, of course. The fish hasn't really got anything to do with the, <laughs> yes. with the dying process. It'll actually be a dead fish, Jan, because the all the burns that came off the loch at that So time, polluted, yeah. By this, all this industry which was going on around in the gastro and the Gallagate, uh, that, that would have been a dead fish. So. Oh, well. <laughs> Um, and then the Good one thing. I, I like the ha- like sort of house and home one. So um, pottery, barrels, um, the houses. Um, I love this little windmill. Uh huh. Yeah, I know. I think that's based on Parson Gordon. I think there's one. Is there one Parson Gordon that looks like that? There are. There's this, and there's several known about. Well, we've obviously got windmill. Uh-huh. Day. There were two or three. I'm sure, sure were known about mm. some of them in, on Parson Gordon. Um, and and the bread oven, of course, uh, St Paul Street, yes, where well, the Bon Accord Centre is now. They found this sort of circle of stones. Uh, that's the top image here with clay. 
which they thought was a, a sort of bread oven. And, and you built one in your garden, actually, a bit like that. I did. It did. It collapsed spectacularly in the winter. It has to be used all the time, which they would have been, of course. They'd have been used probably daily. I mean, that's the um, with all the structures, Jan, isn't it? Not just the oven, but the houses and all the buildings would have been heated. And if they weren't, they would have fallen, you know, they would have... Yeah, they would have, because, they, yeah. Yeah, because it's, it was built with clay. The oven was built with clay, but it wasn't fired. So it was just dried out with the heat. I mean, there would have been a slight sort of fired layer on the inside, but most of it was just clay. And when it rained, it would get wet. So unless it was dried out again, eventually it would just... So have, so have you made uh, pizzas, Jan, in your... So Jan, I think we've actually lost Jan, the picture of Jan for the moment, uh, because her uh, internet is not great. But Jan, I was just going to ask you uh, about the bread oven. You made one, and what did you... You made pizzas in it? We made pizzas, yeah. We made pizzas, and we... Um... Did a lot of nice roasts in it as well so yeah so it worked it was good it did work it definitely worked yeah yeah it was good fun yeah and then it collapsed so i built another one using a slightly different technique and then that one collapsed as well over the winter so uh my husband and son are currently on version three which they're making with fire bricks so it's not going to uh, hopefully not. Um, <laughs> yeah. And this is just another image of it. Um, again, I really like these images. This sort of backlands. This was based on the where the Bonacord Centre is now, isn't it? Based on the things that we had from the excavation. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah I think that was about the first drawing I ever did for the for the um, archaeology unit. That was a really early one. So at the, I mean, at the top, you've got the back, you've got the, the forelands houses, haven't you, on Upper Kirkgate? And then these are the back. Yeah, this is, this is one of the, yeah, this is one of the closest or venals that took you into, um, wherever, oh, yeah, that took you into the main street. Yeah. And this isn't just the back gardens. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we have a lot of archaeological evidence for this. Obviously, on the digs, we found ditches which divided the plots. Um, we found barrels and pottery and chicken bones and, you know, all sorts of different things that, that allowed you to create this. So actually you had quite a lot of information for creating something like this. Yes, there was, yeah. My wee boy peeing in the ditch here. It's quite fun. Oh, this one. Oh, yes. <laughs> Based on one of your sons? Probably. <laughs> I didn't have any at that point, so... So what about no. when you've got some a person centre stage like this? I mean, that's uh, that's quite a tricky thing to do, is it? Um, I think I that's a I think that was a second version of him. I think I had it with a different figure in the front there that I didn't like, so I took it out and um, put him in instead. So sometimes it can be. But I mean, he's wearing boots like we've excavated. He's wearing a belt. Yeah. We've excavated bits of the belts. He's got a knife in a sheath hanging from his belt, and all of these things are things that we've excavated. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a matter of asking whether he's going to have a big, a big nose and grey hair or not. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. What, I can't really remember the first, the first version. I just remember changing his. I think it was even maybe just his head. I didn't like his face or something. Like that changed it but and then there's the one the inside one and again this is quite an early one i think um well, yeah very that early that same excavation yeah. i've been using this in talks for a long time you know children really like this because there's so much going on and again it's all based on the excavations there mm -hmm. that's right the hearth and the cooking pots um there's this, the smoke to cover the detail and obviously the gloom is another way of um Avoiding having to put in too much detail. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what we, we used that. Sorry, go on. Sorry, we used that as a, a basis for the hut, the house that we reconstructed in Cotton Street. Um, yeah. We converted a, a room into that, that room, basically, didn't we? 
We did, yeah, yeah, and had children every week. We had a class of children mm -hmm. experience medieval life, um, yeah, which was great, very, very yeah. successful, yeah, yeah. But I like you've got you've obviously got this small um, industri industry, so you've got the spinning um, spindle wheel here. You've got carding and um, carding, yeah. You've um, got, got the pots and limited the furniture, obviously, a stool and a table. Um, there was a bed, I think, in the, that we built in the other one, but in in the actual building. But uh, yeah, very li limited furniture. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of stuff hung from the ceiling. Sorry. I mean, the last site, Jan, we're just going to talk a little bit about the Carmelite Friary because we've done, well, we mentioned it earlier. You started, before I started in the unit, in 1881, you were working with Judith Stones and the Carmelite Friary. And then I went back in 1994 and excavated another large area of it. And so it's probably the site that we've excavated, you know, the most of. And um, so you created this fantastic uh, illustration um, of... So this is the Trinitarians. This is looking north. And this is the Trinitarians, the Carmelites. Um, the St. Catherine Hill. Obviously. And, and, and St. Nicholas up at, up at the top. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, I mean, part of this is based on, on Parson Gordon's map. But the... Yeah. The actual, I mean, the Carmelite had, Friary had actually gone by then, and so I was just showing you. Yeah. Sort of, it, it was in here, wasn't it? I think the Trinitarians were still. There. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So. Oh. Yeah. You go on. No, go on. You go. I'll I'll, I'll go back. Well, I was going to say that I think the, the the image that I did, if I'd been doing it now, I think I'd have put in more houses. It would have been more congested. Looks very kind of like a little village, doesn't it? Although. Yeah, I think I would have put in more more properties and made it less rural looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, that works really nicely showing you how it sits in the, because we knew that these friaries were very marginal, the medieval friaries were often very, and very marginal land, you know, and this is, we've obviously got the den burn in here uh, and the D coming in and the, Pataki burn is that? I think that's yeah. that, isn't it? Yeah. So very, very marginal, prone to flooding, and um, and actually the the buildings that we excavated, you know, reflected that in the sense they had really big foundations and um, you know, almost the land was sort of built up, um, and this would have all been reclaimed. This land would have all been reclaimed. Um, so I just wanted to show a couple of images. I mean, this is a really nice one. This is looking south. From the green down the venal, um, which we actually didn't excavate, but um, we have historical evidence for. Yeah. And so that's looking the gate. Yeah. You've got the gate here into the Carmelite Friar and the door of the church in the background there with the shopkeepers. Yeah. Well, it, the same the same applies to that. I think I, I think it would probably have been a bit more, a bit more congested, and well, I did try to make it look a bit, you know, with the puddles and things. So it wasn't totally. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but then again, this would have been, you know, there would have been quite a number of wealthy people living here, merchants, and so. Merchants. Yeah. 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 Um, and then into the friary itself. Um, I mean, again, this is a great image of the. This is this is the in, inside of the um, east end of the church. Right, and and it would have been decorated, and of course, all over in those days. So, but that I mean that was that was just a that was the initial sketch for it. I don't think I did a color version of that. I don't think so. I couldn't find one. No, I don't. No, I think they went like that, and then the the, the lads who were doing the the fly through rendered it all and put colour in it. I mean, this was obviously a problem because we had only excavated the west end because um, the east end was taken away by Victorian housing, um, and so I know that we discussed this quite a lot about what it would have looked like, and this was based a lot on other um, friary churches, wasn't it? Yeah, which is all you can do, really. Yeah, you haven't got the evidence. You can, yeah, you can only 
do that, base it on something else. I like that there's a body under the sheet, you know, waiting. Yes. It's got the <laughs> yeah. tile floor, which yeah. we know we've, we found a lot of tiles from the excavation. Tiles, that's right, yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, they've yeah. obviously been digging these up all the time for burying different people um, under the floor. Piggledy. Yeah. And then the I like the outside burial yeah. one as well. We obviously had, ex from the excavation, we had, well, we had some coffin remains. Uh, you can see the nails here of the coffins. Um, and we had little shroud pins so that we know that some people were only buried in a shroud and not in a coffin. Um, so I quite like this sort of shrouded burial image that you did. Uh, again, based on the outline of the church, we had we had buttresses and um, we obviously had window glass. We had these fantastic cobbles around the outside. Um, so this is one of the external burials that you're depicting here. Just how to be buried in a shroud, basically. And um, the way the shroud's folded is quite interesting. The way it, they have the flap that came over the head. Like that, that would have been pinned down, I suppose. Well, quite often when you uh, you have the skeleton, you have a green stain on the forehead and one on the pelvis. Um, so, yes, I mean, they, they would have been pinned in some way. And the lack of gravestones. I mean, there's a few crosses there and a mark, a, a couple of stone markers. Um, they wouldn't have had gravestones like we, we have nowadays, obviously, with inscriptions and things on them. I mean, we had over 300 burials from the West End and um, a lot of them were in areas where people walked. So within the church and um, there they were burials underneath these cobble surfaces. And so, um, you know, they couldn't have left stones up most of the time because people would have been tripping over them and they were in areas that they needed to walk in. They had a market, didn't they, in um, some of the graveyards? So next. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then just briefly and finally, Jan, again, we worked on site at Fivey Castle, um, a research excavation with Shannon Fraser in 2010 to 12. And um, we ex we did, I did a lot of geophysics and we excavated this lovely uh, floor and walls of what we thought might be a, a chapel uh, within the gardens, um, in, within the garden um, of the private garden of Alexander Seaton in the late 1500s, early 1600s. And um, so Shannon had commissioned you to do this illustration. Um, I know that this mm -hmm. was quite, this took a lot of time to, because we'd excavated, it we'd excavated this building, or the floor of it, and a little, little pieces of the garden. So I was trying to get to make sort of sense of the bits of the garden that had been, they used col different coloured stones, um, which I think you excavated bits that were, that was sort of dark stone and there was pinky stone. And so the, the stones were used as much as the flowers, really, the, the planting to um, create a pattern. That would have been the private garden or the castle. And then they had the big um, kitchen garden um, over there, which is also decorative too. Um, so part yeah. of this, Jan, when you when you did this, we we looked at layouts like uh, Parson Gordon's map of, of yes, that's right, uh -huh. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the one of Edinburgh, the the, the, the Parson Gordon one of Edinburgh, has got some amazing gardens in it up the high street. Yeah. yeah, so so we do, we just looked at different images and um, you then, well, we, we picked one that we thought was the most similar probably to... Um, yes, that's right, yes. Uh -huh. And then you just have to work it out from that. And um, there's a, a sundial in the middle, which I think was probably based on the one at Pitt Medden, which is still there. And then you've got... And the bowling people, green. You've got mm -hmm. people bowling. So we knew that there was a bowling green and we found... On the excavation, this area was really compacted, wasn't it? And we wondered if that's where the Bowling Green had been. And I think there was some documentary evidence. The bit to the, to the left on the screen, that bit, I think archery practice, I think, is the theory with that. But then these people sweeping in here, I know this was, a, this was um, you know, you did a, a few versions of this, but this was to show that you wouldn't have come in. Nowadays, you can come in and walk straight into here. But actually, you've yes. gone round the side and round the back. Yeah, the entrance was round. 
Well, I think it, the, the main entrance was on the right hand side. This between is, the two, yes, yeah, in there. Uh -huh. Yeah. And there must there was a courtyard in the middle because all that back range is gone now. That yeah, absolutely. But this would have been their private garden. So, I mean, they were a Catholic family and uh, a private garden. And we'd wondered if this might be a little private chapel uh, that had been built for them. But if you were coming in, you could clearly see that you couldn't not see into that garden and you would have come around. Um... So, Jan, thank you so much. I mean, our connection's been a little bit odd at the end, but um, thank you so much for doing this. And okay. to us today. It's been nice seeing them. I have some, some of these I haven't seen for a very, very long time. So it's been quite nice seeing them again. Yeah, good. Thank you very much. Okay.